Hey y'all, Christy Cook here from Tea Dottles. Um, today I'm going to do a tutorial over how to do a double sided crocheted hot pad. Um, I'm actually going to make the uh, handle hot pad that I showed on my blog Monday. Um, I will link everything down below uh, for how you can find um, how you can find for the pattern on the blog it is a free pattern I showed you how to make a uh, rectangular hot pad on the blog um, but this uh, if you can't understand the pictures this take this video will show you how to do the double-sided crochet it's, it's basically like you're crocheting two sides at one time um, it's not in the round so it's a little bit different than crocheting in the round but um yeah and then I'm going to show you how I uh, stitched up the side of that handle to make it uh, where it would go over the handle of my hot pans. Like if you have cast iron pet pots and pans and things like that, it'll be perfect for that. And it is adjustable, easily easily adjusted to what size handle you need it for. So let's go ahead. I am using this is something you definitely want to use 100% cotton yarn for. You do not want to blend, you do not want acrylic, because acrylic is plastic and it will melt. You want 100% cotton yarn for this. Whatever you decide to use, it just needs to be 100% cotton. I am using, this colorful one here is, I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby. And then this white one here is peaches and cream uh, that I got at Walmart. Both 100% cotton. I am holding two together this is two number four yarns so um you could certainly do this with a number five yarn or even a number six uh, well i'd stick with a number five um this is going to make my hot pad very um durable it is also going to make it very thick to help keep the heat away from my hand so let's begin just starting out with my slip knot i've already got it made um, for this pattern, I am using a foundation single crochet, which when I first learned how to do it, I did not like it. It seemed too complicated, but as I've used it more, I've realized it really does save time versus chaining and then single crocheting into the chain. So we need 10 foundation single crochets. So first thing I'm going to do, oh, and I'm using a size K Ten and a half or six and a half millimeter hook for this. So this is really thick. Okay, here we go. The first thing you do for a standing crochet is you chain two or a foundation crochet. Sorry, you chain two. Then you're going to go back in this loop here and insert your hook. Yarn over, pull yarn up through. Then you're going to yarn over and pull yarn through that loop. Then yarn over and pull yarn through both loops. Okay? And that is one. This right here is your single crochet now. This is like the chain bottom. And this little bit back here, I sometimes like to fiddle with that and adjust it to get it straight because it can get confused for a stitch if you um, don't do that. And that can, all this bit back here is just what you started off. Think of it like you chained two and single crocheted in the first chain. That's kind of what you did. Okay. So now we go back into this loop here. Pull up our loop. Yarn over, pull up through that loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. There's our second single crochet, and you can see that starting to form up here at the top. So we need 10 of these. So I'm just going to keep on going, and that's all you do. You go into that loop, pull up a loop, go through the first loop, then go through both loops. You continue on until you have 10 foundation single crochet Pretty good 
got to do pull up a loop. Here we go. All right, almost to the end, we got nine and then 10. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 foundation single crochet, and you'll see it abbreviated as FSC. That's typically how that's abbreviated. All right, so now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. Then we're going to single crochet in that first single crochet. All right, now after this, it's going to get a little bit tricky. So this is your second single crochet. If we turn this on its side like this, you see this loop this loop right here this is the loop we're going to crochet into that's like your foundation chain stitches we're going to be double crocheting into those stitches okay so we're going to yarn over make sure you're at the right stitch that it's above your next this below your next stitch insert it into that loop and then complete your double crochet okay that's what we're going to do all the way down i find it easier to hold the work sideways like this so you don't miss that loop got an extra thread hanging out over here all right so again double crochet right into that loop that is the bottom loop of your foundation crochet that we're cr double crocheting into so uh, it's pretty easy to find them after you find that first one because they're right beside each other on the bottom and then your single crochet loops are up here because I'm working sideways into the work the reason I'm doing this is because it will allow me to get my yarn untangled it will allow me to uh, work this as one piece rather than two halves I have to seam together. All right. I'm just going to keep doing double crochets in those bottom loops all the way to the next to the last one. All right. Now, this is the last single crochet. I'm not gonna double, I'm not gonna double crochet in the bottom. I'm going to single crochet into that single crochet. Here we go. All right. So when you get done, you're gonna kinda have something that looks like this, like a little canoe or a boat. <laughs> um, and on each end, you single crochet into the front row, which will be this row. But in between, you double crochet into the back row. And what this does is allow you to make two sides at once and close up the sides as you go along. So now we're going to chain one, turn the corner. I'm going to single crochet into that first single crochet then my dog will stop <laughs> sorry about that single crochet into that first single crochet now you're not going to single crochet into this you're going to tilt your work you're going to find that stitch on that back row that aligns with this stitch this one here we're going to double crochet into that one ok 
okay? So on each end, you're always going to single crochet into the first and last stitch on the front row, which I'm calling this is the front row, the one facing you. Then you double crochet on the stitches in between on the back row, which would be this one, okay? So we're just gonna now we're just gonna double crochet into those double crochets. Sorry about that, guys. Brief interruption from my dog. <laughs> okay, we're continuing to s double crochet into these, um, and these are the double crochet. These are the single crochets in the top of your foundation single crochet. My yarn's slowly getting closer. Here we go. Double, double, double. I feel like I should say double, double, boil and trouble. But, <laughs> all right, so we're almost to the end. All right, so this is something that can get a little confusing if your work gets twisted. So you want to make sure you turn this. So this is your front row. This is the last stitch of your front row. This is the last stitch of your back row. Okay? Because at the ends, this has become one row at the ends. So we're going to double crochet into that stitch. Then this is the stitch on the front row or in between the rows, really. And we're going to single crochet into that one. Okay? Now, let's take a look at it. Because things are going to want to get twisty. The, um, so it's good to sometimes take a look at this every time. We can see this is our stitch. Here and here are our single crochet stitches at each end. That's like I said before, really in between the rows. It's what closes up that end for us as we're going along. And then we got, if we count them, we count the first single crochet. Remember, we had 10 foundation single crochets. So you should, have, you should have 10 stitches after each row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We've got 10 stitches. One single crochet on this end, one on this end, and eight double crochet in between okay so now we're going to chain one turn so this is what makes this different than working in the round because you're turning after each row versus just going in a loop plus it makes the work flat instead of a circle so now we've chained one and we're going to single crochet into that first one that one is always a single crochet now we're going to leave these stitches up here alone and we're going to find our stitches on the back row. This is going to start making a little pocket right here. All right, and this stitch right here, this is the one we're going to double crochet in. We double crochet. Double crochet. So we're going to have eight double crochets is what we got to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight so that could be a good way to help you keep up with your stitches if you're getting lost in this and i always straighten it out before i get to the end and then here we go this is our single crochet between the rows that we need to single crochet into there we go all right that's the next row done. So, we're going to continue doing that. Um, where you chain one, turn, single crochet one, 
double crochet eight, single crochet one, and you'll continue doing that until you have, let's see, how many rows do we do? Okay, so if you count the single, the foundation, foundation single crochet row is number one. The first double crochet is number two, which is this. And we got three, four. So we're, we've got four rows in right now. So we're going to put in 10 rows all together. Okay. So there's four rows. And then we're going to keep doing that until we get 10 rows. Okay. So I will catch y'all back when I'm done with that. And then I'll show you how to slip stitch the top and the side. Okay, y'all. I'm back with... I finished 10 rows of a double crochet. Well, nine rows of double crochet, one foundation single crochet row. So it's 10 rows all together. So if we count that, this is my foundation single uh, crochet, which is one, two, three, four, five on this side. We flip it over. We got one, two, three, four, five. So that's 10. Since this is two sided, we count each time you flip is a row. So now we have a little pocket like this. Um, but we need to close the top, right? And then I'm going to basically fold this in half. I know that seems really thick, but it makes a very nice uh, pocket for your handle to go into. When you, if you have a cast iron handle, uh, those things can get hot real easy. So now we just need to close up the top. So we're going to chain one, turn, single crochet in that first single crochet like we've been doing. Then, since we want to close this up, we're going to make a single crochet, but we're going to we're going to go through the the loops of the double crochet. Then we're going to go through the back loop only of the double loop, double crochet on the back row. Blah, that was a mouthful. So we're going to go through all those stitches and bring up and then do our, our single crochet. So we go through the stitches like we normally would on the front row and then back loop only on the back row. And we pull up and make our single crochet. So we do that all the way across through the stitches on the front row back loop only on the back row pull that right through make a single crochet front row stitches back loop only on the back row pull it through make a single crochet front row stitches back loop only on the back row there we go loops front row back loop back row, pull it up, make our single crochet, there we go, let's see, we got one more to do, and get that back loop, pull that right through, and single crochet in that last stitch, there we go, now, Everything is closed up. There are no openings now, and you have a super thick, squishy pad. So, I made a big rectangle for a hot pad to sit the pots on. It was about 7x7 seven seven for smaller pots. It's also great to grab those lids with that can be hot um, if you got something with a lid on it. So, this one. Now, this one we're going to, as I said, seam up the sides to make it into a pocket for the handle. So we're just going to fold this right in half, just like this. Now these slip stitches will be on the outside because this is very hard turning that out and it takes up room inside, basically, because it's so thick. So make sure your slip stitches are nice and neat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to, our stitches are, our loops over here with our hook. So we're going to go through, just, I like to grab that, 
and grab some stitches over here just whatever stitches you can get your hook through really and pull that through that first one's always a bit tough and then just slip stitch so we're doing a slip stitch not a single crochet um, I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through these stitches right here and these stitches right here we're gonna get my hook to go in there there we go pull it up sometimes it's easier to all right that one's not wanting to work for me there we go through there through there slip stitch so although this is a little tough to get to the side at least it's not a very long way so I'm just gonna go usually I find it easier to go right in the middle of that double crochet most of the time that works the best so there we go so that makes kind of long slip stitches but it gives it a nice edge um, you can try to go in there if you want to I just found it the best to just go right through that the side of that uh, double crochet and do just a slip stitch because this isn't something we're too concerned about coming apart like um, when you put it in the wash this is cotton especially if you dry it on high heat because most things in the kitchen you tend to wash and dry on hot well I do anyway uh, so it's going to shrink up a little bit because it's cotton it's 100% cotton so something to think about too it's going to make those stitches tighter um, let's go right through here all right all right we're almost to the end we'll go through that last double crochet There we go. My dog's talking to y'all again. All right, fingers work. There we go. Working with cotton's not always fun, but this this is a pretty quick make and something useful. All right, so we got our long slip stitches across there. Like I said, I usually just try to go into the um the side of the single the double crochets. That's just the easiest place to get because it's a pretty thick fabric. Um, I leave this on the outside, and when I weave it in, it tucks all that in real nice. Um, you can tuck it inside if you want to, however you want to do that. But I plan on weaving that in the bottom once I'm done, and that will take care of that little bump that happens at the end. Um, plus, I'm going to stitch over it with some slip stitches. I'm going to go right in here. And find this corner over here this is not an exact science we're just trying to seam up that side get out the way there we go so now we got to seam up this end right here and this end is actually the bottom that you started with okay so um so then you get this flatter end at the top at the other end okay so we're just gonna go through some stitches over here do the same thing I'm gonna slip stitch slip stitch I try to find the same stitch to go through it's just so it kind of keeps it even and on this one, it's best to go through that bumpy looking one. I just find it easier to put it right through there. This part is tough because you're going through so much yarn, but at least it's not 10 miles long, right? <laughs> All right, let's get through this last little corner. Come on. Alright. There we go. This is much harder for me to do anyway under the camera because it's not how I usually hold my crochet when I'm <laughs> crocheting. Alright. So now that we're at the corner, 
Um, I like to make a little loop if I wanted to hang it up or something. I just think it looks cute too. So I'm going to chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. We'll turn it around like this. And I'm going to slip stitch in the side of that stitch right there to anchor it down. All right. This is awkward to hold. Slip stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch in this first little chain going on right here. It just goes back around. Okay. Then I'm going to take my snips if I can find them. Where are my snips at? Oh, got these big ones. That'll work. I'm going to leave me a tail and cut it. Pull that on through. And then I will take it and weave it down in there weave all those ends in but now you got a little pocket that goes over the end of your handle to keep uh, your hands from getting burned so yeah it's very thick that's why it was so hard to seam up that side but having the seam on the outside I don't think that looks bad that looks cute it's gonna be in the kitchen it's something to work with. This is a great way to use up scraps. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to put a link down below, like I said, of my blog post about the hot pad itself. Um, this is made the same way. We just folded it in half and seamed up the sides and added the loop. The hot pad has a loop, too. Um, yeah. And... This fits. I have a set of cast iron pans that uh, all the way from a mini up to a big one. And this size fits all of the handles very well. So it's actually a little, it's a little big for the mini, but it you can still grab it, right? So, um, yeah. Like I said, it's a pretty easy pattern to adjust. Nothing too major. Um, but yeah, there's my tutorial for doing the double-sided crochet. I'm making you a little hot handle hot pad. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and I will see y'all next time. I also forgot to say, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing down below. And uh, now I will see y'all next time. <laughs>